I want you to watch this. After several years as a member of the United States ski team and a professional racer, look at this. Our next guest became one of the understandably small number of men and women who practiced the art of extreme skiing. Was that it? <laughs> Was that it? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome extreme skier, Kim Reichhelm. Kim? <laughs> Now, I know so, uh, we, we had to work uh, the word extreme into your introduction five or six times so people would understand this is not normal skiing or cross-country skiing. <laughs> this is something beyond what we may be accustomed to. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. And the clip that you showed is not normal mm -hmm. either. <laughs> now, now, tell us about that. Where was that? And that was you. And were, were those, was that rented equipment? <laughs> <laughs> That was at Squaw Valley in Squaw California. Valley. Is that the, the best place for this kind of skiing? Well, in the United States, it's one of the best uh, places. The California Sierra Mountains have great, you know, extreme vertical terrain. Right. And so it's really, you, you skate up to, skate up, ski up to a drop off and then just kind of toss yourself down. Is that, is that it? Well, yeah, you don't toss yourself down, but you have to change your ski to be at the same vertical that the terrain is so uh, that, that you land and don't wipe out like I did in okay. the shot. We're, we're going to look at some more uh, film of you skiing here, and just, I guess you can tell us what we're looking at. That's, that, geez, this that is brutal. Re remarkably I have to keep watching to this wipe out. Ago. Now, were you injured when that happened? I, um, I hit my head mm -hmm. in that when I, when I fell through those rocks. What happened was I jumped into the terrain, and the snow broke out from underneath yeah. me, and I started tumbling, and because the terrain was so uh, now, steep... I don't know what that means. You're, you keep saying train. What is that? Terrain. Oh, it's terrain. I'm terrain. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Metro North. You just, well, you can either ski down or get in the train. <laughs> um, uh, and, okay, and we have more footage of this? Three more. <laughs> and I don't know. Let's, let's just take a look at all the footage we have here. Of I this, was in uh, Squaw Valley with uh, Greg Stump Productions filming a movie license. Oh, oh no! Man! Now, how fast are you going there when you, when you hit the tree? I wasn't really going very fast, yeah. um, but it didn't matter because the tree didn't move. Um. Yeah. Uh, and you were you injured badly in that spill? No, I wasn't. I, really? I, I was not injured at all when I hit the tree. Actually, there's some audio uh -huh. in that shot, and I was laughing because I spent my most of my career ski racing, and yeah. the fact that I misjudged the turn and hit the tree was pretty funny and luckily that I, that I wasn't hurt. Yeah. I was the difficult part of that maneuver was after the tree and into a gully and then I was supposed to do a re-entry move and my concentration was beyond the tree and I was looking at um, the maneuver that I had to make after the tree so I wasn't really looking at the tree and I thought I was going to miss it. Now if, if you skated, uh, excuse me. <laughs> if, if you have skied competitively uh, on teams in, in college and uh, I guess is it World Cup? Is that the right. what we're competing? The US ski team. Uh, and it's all downhill and maybe slalom, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, why then are, have you moved on to this? Because this is not a, an ongoing series of competitions per se, is it? No, it's not. What happened was when I retired from ski racing, I really wanted to continue to challenge my skiing. So I challenged it through more difficult terrain. Yeah, but I mean, it, but also it looks like you could really get yourself hurt pretty badly here. Well, you can, could. can you make any money at this? Um, extreme skiers, some of them do. The yeah. guys that ski with um, Warren Miller and Greg Stump make some money. Some these, of the these are the people who shoot those films that we always see. Right. And so forth. The yeah. film that I was shooting, License to Thrill, with uh, Stump Productions, yeah. they, we make some money. Now, do we have some more film? <laughs> hey, what a surprise. <laughs> Here we go. Show us and tell us what this is. This is uh, the Palisades at Squaw Valley, one of the first days we were shooting. The most difficult part about making these films is these are, these are the first turns of the morning. So you don't have a whole lot of time to, to warm up. First turns of the morning, yeah. meaning you're... Meaning this is about um, 7 o'clock in the morning before any of the lifts are. <laughs> Now, but you, you have injured yourself, haven't you? I mean, you hurt uh, some uh, knee yeah, or thigh I muscle? Did. Yeah, I did. I have been hurt skiing. Um, I blew out my knee mm -hmm. last year. Now, are there other women doing this? There aren't very many women doing yeah. this. I think that what happens is a lot of women get involved in competition, and then once they're done with the U.S. ski team, they move on to other things if they want to pursue in their life. Yeah. I um, stayed in the ski industry. I produced a series of promotions for women called the K2 Women Ski Adventures. Mm -hmm. So I'm skiing all the time. I'm involved in the industry. So I have an opportunity to ski quite a bit. But so. at one point, aren't you going to look back on this and say, man, I'm nuts. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into skating. <laughs> I don't know. That's 
seems to be pretty dangerous also. Um, yeah, well, uh, do, you, do you have uh, trouble with chapped lips? <laughs> uh, and you're also a windsurfer, I understand. That's right. Yeah, pretty good at that. Where do you do most of your windsurfing? I live up in the Columbia River Gorge area. Th that's beautiful up there, it isn't is. it? It is. It's, it's incredible. an ideal life. It is. Yeah, it's... I would guess living there, it would be hard to believe that the rest of our planet might be in trouble. Yeah. Well, the trees are going away pretty Are they really? There. Oh, yeah. There's... From where, where do they go? They're, they're going to Japan, from what I understand. Really? <laughs> Souvenir hunters. Yes. Yeah. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Congratulations you. on uh, your knees. Well, is this... We'll be right back here, folks. They live life on the edge. Every day knowing that if they fall, they die. But it's never stopped them from going to extremes. You need that adrenaline rush. It's something that you need. It's a part of you. Are they nuts? So you're saying that they are biologically different? Elizabeth Vargas goes to a place where it's all downhill from here. I'm a kid. What she does could get you killed. Take the ride of your life with these extreme skiers. Plus, can you guess what? Now, Dateline, if the kitty roller coaster gives you sweaty palms, watch out. You're about to go to a place where few have gone before, but some brave souls go every day. They are called extreme skiers, and for them, there really is no mountain high enough. So why do they do it, and how do they live to tell? Here's Elizabeth Vargas. <sighs> All of the blood is running through your veins. It's nervousness, it's excitement. The muscles are twitching. That feeling of butterflies and adrenaline. It's a high like you wouldn't imagine. There's nothing else that gives you that feeling. It's extreme skiing, the sport at its ultimate most exhilarating and most terrifying. There are no fancy lifts. Skiers often climb to their runs. And those runs, off cliffs, between rocks, around trees, down chutes, through ungroomed paths torn by nature out of the side of a mountain, catching what they call big air. It's a kind of combination downhill race and demolition derby. This is what happened to one competitor in the 1993 U.S. Extreme Championships. Remarkably, he survived. Two, one, go. Earlier this month, they held the 1995 U.S. Extremes in a narrow chute with a 1,400-foot vertical drop. Around Crested Butte, Colorado, locals call it the body bag. Let's have a big hand for bit number 43, Allison Gannett. They are among the best skiers in the world and more. They push the danger point well past the point where most World Cup racers dare. When you're skiing above rocks or a cliff or in a situation where you can't afford to make a mistake, that's extreme. Extreme skiing is a relatively new sport in the U.S. It was the brainchild of a few French mountaineers in the 1970s. They decided the best alpine skiing wasn't enough. Two of the original group have since died. On the very mountains, they were forever challenging. Now, extreme skiing has caught on in the United States as a hot new challenge for the hottest skiers. You need that adrenaline rush, and if you don't have it, then you're not satisfied. Next year, bit 34, Kim Reichelm. Kim Reichelm won the World Extreme Skiing Championship four years ago. Your heart pounds really hard, sort of like when you meet somebody and you first fall in love. It's just like that. So you're basically falling in love every day. Started when Kim Reichelm was very young. Even then, skiing like everyone else was boring. I've always had an incredible desire to excel. I knew when I was very young that I wanted to be good. A self-described tomboy, she was always in competition against her two brothers. At age 16, she was selected for the U.S. Ski Climb Course, Crested Butte, Colorado. I'm not out there to kill myself, but I'm out there to push the limits and, uh, and really just ride on the edge. Dave Swanwick, known as Swanee to his friends, won the World Extremes last year. Normally in extreme skiing, how steep are the slopes you guys are doing? We're skiing anything from 
40 degrees to 65 degrees. And this is a nice shoot here. It's not that it's so steep, it's that it's technical. Well, I think it looks pretty steep. How, how steep is this? What would you say that is, Kim? 45. Ski racing wasn't enough of a challenge for Kim or Swanee. The toughest courses were just too easy. In fact, extreme ski slopes are often twice as steep as the toughest resort slopes. It's a biological calling that I have inside me that, that needs me to challenge myself and, and push myself just a little bit beyond each day. It's a fear rush, and I'm getting adrenaline from that fear. Can you understand how some people might think you're crazy? I mean, I come on, you're skiing off cliffs and off rocks, and you're suspended in the air. You're going down slopes that you have to hike up or rappel down a rock to get to. I mean... I guess for some people, that, that would be crazy. I, to me... Driving a cab in New York City is twice as crazy. People watch you guys doing this, and they shake their heads and go, these people are nuts. Some of us are. I mean, I don't think I am. But um, I've seen a lot of skiers take chances that I would never take. And some of them will get hurt. And people will continue to die, unfortunately. It's a dangerous sport. They need a rush. The kind of rush that's not provided you know, just an ordinary, everyday living. Psychologist Keith Johnsgaard has been studying what he calls high sensation seekers for 30 years. He started with race car drivers. Now he's trying to get inside the heads of the world's most daring skiers. He says they aren't crazy, but they're not like us. So you're saying that they are biologically different? Oh, definitely. These people have very low levels, for example, of serotonin and a neurochemical everybody's talking about. So they tend to be much more impulsive than most of us. How do they look at the mountain differently from how maybe you and I might look at the mountain? What people like you and I would feel when we look down a slope like that is anxiety. And a it, lot of it, personally a speaking. A whole lot, yeah, it would terrify me. They feel excitement. And if you drop right this there. way, they research the terrain, study the cliffs and the conditions, and then carefully choose their run. Nature is scary. Nature should be respected. You have to work with nature and be very, very aware that nature can be really mean. They got no kind of death wish. The last thing these people want to do is stop living and having these kinds of rushes. Fox! They don't do it for the big paycheck. They dream of ski film contracts or endorsements and take whatever jobs they can find. They aren't ski bums, but... Good morning, this is Swanee with your ski and weather report. Swanee's up at 5 a.m. on Crested Butte TV, and he works as a ski patroller. Anything to buy time until the next run, until the next race. We have had 20 inches in the last 24 hours. <laughs> Reichelm owns her own business, running extreme skiing clinics. Um, right now, the ski patrol is up... More and more, the skiers with the talent and the courage want to savor the danger. Uh, it, it's a uh, competition and uh, lots of mental discipline to force yourself down a hill that scares the hell out of you. Steve Wynn, who owns a computer company, invited five of his employees to the clinic. He believes conquering the mountain will make them better workers. All right, Pam, don't be necessarily going across the fall line. Be going down the hill. Get you make it look so easy. And to somebody who might be inclined to ski off a cliff or down a chute, um, and might not be as skilled as you, is it dangerous that, that people would watch that and want to try it? People see us just do things on film, jump off cliffs or do wild maneuvers, and they don't see how much time and energy we put into it prior. The research and the training and the thought that goes into a big maneuver. What does your family think about your extreme skiing? They're not that crazy about it. It makes them really nervous. and <laughs> I can't imagine and... why. <laughs> These are the moments they live for, the fourth annual U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. 103 men and 22 women, thrill seekers from around the world. They have come to challenge some of the toughest terrain in North America. They're not competing for Cadillacs or $100,000 checks. It's a chance to win a title 
and to experience the ultimate thrill. Our next gear is Kim Rykel, bit number 34. Four days of grueling runs over 82 inches of powder in one of Crested Butte, Colorado's biggest snowstorms, but nothing will stop them. At age 34, Kim Reichhelm has never won the U.S. championships. Today, she's fighting for first place against top skiers like Noel Lyons and Allison Gannett. Well, you know what I kept thinking is, maybe Allison will ski in it, stick a tip and lose the ski. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Kim. Our next competitor, Dave Swanwick, bib number 96. By day three, Swanee is struggling to hold on to first place, but he runs into trouble. Yeah, sometimes you do fall down cliffs. We've fallen so many times, even falling part of skiing. They have a need to achieve, a need to be the best. That's just almost unparalleled in any group of people. These are our top guns. These are the people who fly off aircraft carriers. These are the doctors and nurses in uh, operating rooms who love it and can handle it. These are the people on the floor of the stock exchange who need and can deal with this kind of incredible stimulation. Life is dull without it. I'd like to think that in another age, I'd be somebody jumping on a ship and, uh, and saying, God, there's got to be another. There's got to be another side to this planet. Now, I've skied some really, really awful, awful conditions where, you know, you're just hating it, but you're still loving it. You know what I mean? I'd rather be there than any place else in the world. When they added up the final scores, there were three injuries: one concussion, a blown-out knee, and one broken nose. Dave Swanwick fell short of his goal, finishing third in the men's finals. He won a t-shirt, some goggles, and $250. <laughs> For four years, Reichhelm wanted to be the American champion. Now, for the first time, she's finally done it, finishing number one for women in the U.S. extreme skiing.